Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to 3DIY. I'm Andrew. Today on the show, I'm going to be making Link's Hylian Shield from Breath of the Wild. Eh, sorta. I mean, my references were pretty sketchy for this one, if I'm frank. So, it's Breath of the Wild, but it's also kind of the one from Skyward Sword, and then just like, yeah, I don't know. It's good. It's a shield. It's a shield, and it is Hylian. Let's get started. Okay, first things first. For any good replica, we need some references. Otherwise, I'm just going to be making it up off the top of my head, and who wants that? I want an accurate prop, goddammit. So, first off, I got this one picture from Breath of the Wild. And then, later on while I was modeling it, I realized that I needed a backside and a side side, and I couldn't really find that. So I also used a couple of these references from Skyward Sword, which has a very similar Hylian Shield design. Once I've got my references, I can bring those on into Fusion 360, then I'll just trace the profile of the shield, all the surface details, and with a little bit of a curve and some extrusions. And then this is where the Skyward Sword reference comes in for the back of the shield here. A little beveling detail, and we've got a Hylian shield ready to go. Montage time! One eternity later. You know how sometimes when you're trying to work on a project, life just comes in and decides to shit on you? I was printing the base for the shield, you know, just getting ready to finish up the episode, make a nice little post, and boom, my 3D printer just stops working properly. And honestly, it was like a year ago and a bazillion anxiety attacks ago, so I'm back now, and I thought I would pick up the project that I died on, but eh, that's no good. So why don't I try something ridiculously ambitious and make a life-size shield? So I've already got the model. All I gotta do is split it into the appropriate amount of pieces to be able to fit it on my tiny print bed, and we can actually start the real 3D printing montage. It's the real one. First one was a fake cow. Alright, now that I've got all of the pieces I need to make this massive shield, I just gotta sit down and start gluing them together. This part is where you realize just exactly how imperfect all of these prints are together. Don't get me wrong, like, they all look really good, but you know, they've got a little bit of warping, but that's exactly fine. That's what the next stage is for. So I like to use this magical stuff called Bondo. I think you may have heard of it, big in the 3D printed prop community. Basically, it's the stuff that you use to fill small holes in cars. And I'm going to use that to fill small holes in my 3D printed props. Because, okay, hey, it works really well. Once I've got a good amount of the holes filled and I've done a, like a semi amount of sanding, I'm going to take it outside and put on the first layer of sandable primer. This stuff is perfect because it just exposes everywhere where I need to do more work. And basically from this point, it's just back and forth sanding and then priming again, sanding, more filler, more sanding, did I mention even more sanding? It's a lot of sanding. And frankly, I didn't do as much sanding as I would have liked to. Props a little rough around the edges. At some point during this process, I decided I would try to pick up the shield and realized something really disturbing. Remember how I modeled the back portion of the shield based on Skyward Sword? Well, apparently those developers didn't really care if Link could fit his hand in the, in the handle. So I just kind of hacked that part off and modeled a new handle that I can plug right into the holes. Thankfully, since I modeled this shield, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has come out and it has like amazing camera controls. So I can really get a great look and see what Link's shield's handle is supposed to look like. And then I will just quickly model that up 
with this design to kind of friction fit into the holes that are left over from where the old handle used to be. It'll just kind of pop right in there. It's not the most secure fit, but this is mostly a wall prop and I just want to have the handle so that I can say that I have the handle, you know? You know? For the wrap around the handle, I got this white rope at the dollar store, which is pretty much perfect. I'm just gonna wrap that around the handle a bunch of times until it feels comfortable and glue it down. Alright, now everything needs a good paint job. I used almost exclusively spray paint for this build. First thing I did was I got this silver spray paint and put that all over the areas that needed to be silver. Next, I'll mask out the blue area, lay down some spray paint. Hopefully that's not too thick. Looks a little thick. Okay, let's let's just see how that peels off. Oh, oh no, oh fuck. That's not, okay, all right, it's okay. I can work with this, I can work with this. Well, here's a perfect opportunity to show you a trick I know. Definitely planned learning experience. Check this out. So if you messed up your edges like I did when you pull off your masking tape, don't worry. You can just take the spray paint, spray it straight into a container until it starts to like actually accumulate as a liquid, and then you can just paint that right on with the paintbrush. And obviously it's not as fine as a perfectly sprayed spray can finish, but it's just to fix up these little mistakes and you're not going to notice it with all the weathering anyway, so. You. All right, now I do the same thing for the gold and paint all the red in. For the strap on the back, Julie graciously donated this old leather belt. It's kind of perfect, like weirdly perfect. All right, so I'm just going to stick my arm in there, see if I can figure out approximately what size leather strip I need. Cut that out and how did I, how is that too short? Okay, all right, well, I'll just, okay, I'll just cut another piece. I've got enough belt here. Okay, that's, how is that one too long? Now I just mix up some five minute epoxy, spread it on the edges, and stick those firmly in their slots. In five minutes, that'll be perfect, and it'll be able to support a lot of weight. That epoxy stuff is strong. Now I just need to weather it up to suit the world of Breath of the Wild a little more. Gotta breathe that wild into it, you know? And then Blink's Hylian Shield from Breath of the Wild is done. Well, that was a wild ride. It's funny how projects that have such big failures can turn out to be so inspiring to make something awesome. Like, I don't know if I would have even made this by this time if I had never like failed so critically trying to make a small one. This is the biggest thing I've 3D printed and made by a lot, like a lot, a lot. I think the previous biggest thing was the Thor's hammer pencil holder, so. I'm pretty proud of myself, honestly. After all that frustration, I'm just really glad that I have something awesome to show for it. And I can hide behind. All right, that's all for this episode of 3DIY. Don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me what you thought of this week's episode. And don't be too mean. I may have my armor up, but you know, I still have feelings. Let me know what other props you'd like to see me tackle on the show, especially if you think that they are too complicated. Don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell, do all that good YouTube stuff. You know, you gotta do it. Ew. Until next week, stay creative, you nerds.